Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on Train Supply Manager. Get going with Train Supply Manager in under five minutes. What is Train Supply Manager? Basically, Train Supply Manager is a mod that enables uh, a change from vanilla's push to out to your destination paradigm to one where uh, the demand points within your train network actually pull trains based on their demand. This should ultimately result in a more efficient uh, train network overall, especially when you get a more complex uh, and larger train system operating. So enough about that, that's the background. How do you get it going? Well, first of all, there's a tech. You need to get the TSM tech. It's pretty cheap, it's just red and green. Uh, and it's prerequisite to basically get the railway and the automated rail transportation, as well as circuit network, because we use some very basic circuit network to tell TSM when there's demand to send a train. Uh, so that's it as far as tech goes. Now, how does it all work? Well, first of all, what you want is to have a uh, basic, this is a basic uh, way of setting it up. There's more complicated ways we'll get into later, but here's a train at a, or outpost. Um, very simple, normal train stop, just loaded up with ore, full cargo inventory, the usual thing that you'd do without TSM. Now, with TSM, the idea is to send this somewhere uh, that makes sense within your factory, somewhere effective for uh, what we consider to be like a supply depot. Uh, you can have as many of these as you like. It doesn't really matter where exactly they are. But in this case, we have our uh, furnaces here. So we're basically trying to um, send the train somewhere close to the furnace stacks. Um, and we'll move on from there. So to create a supply depot, you need the supplier train stop. That's a special stop from the TSM collection. It's one of the three objects we indicated at the beginning. Let's create a supplier stop on all of these and we'll call it uh, iron or supply. You can call it iron or depot or something like that. The name doesn't really matter. We are making the name consistent across all of them. And then that is the other part of your train setup. You fill up somewhere and then you send it to a convenient depot where you wait for circuit condition and circuit condition blank. So the train's already arrived, here it is. And um, we now want to utilize this train in our very simple network. So we come over here and we want to create a demand now. The demand is created using the second type of train stop, the requester train stop. Uh, which we'll put here. Um, you'd normally say have one for each platform and you are actually controlling down to the platform uh, where the train will go. These could easily be very disparate across your base, but in this case, for simplicity's purposes, they're quite close to each other. We'll only set up the first one uh, because the process is very similar regardless of um, how many you need to set up. So the idea is you put down the request to train stop. It comes with this special uh, train counter. That's the only way you'll get one of these. It's always tied to a request to train stop. Then in our simple uh, setup case, we are using a train requester. This will actually specify the demand and uh, sourcing priority and, and so on for the trains. And a combinator just to tell us when it thinks we actually have a situation where we want a train. So basic setup, find out the total amount of stuff that you have at your train stop uh, into the back of the combinator. From the front of the combinator, include the train counter next, then the requester. There's no wire directly from here to here. You want to go to the back, then from the front. Also turn on alt mode um, if you haven't already. Now. What we're basically saying here is if our iron ore supply is less than a threshold, in this case, shall we say less than a train load. So if it's less than 2000, um, we want to set an output. This normally you would want to have as a virtual signal. That is the best thing to put here. So let's go into the standard virtual signals. By convention, I normally use a P. Doesn't matter what you use, you can use any of these. 
but I'm going to use a P because that's what I use by convention. So this will set a P. As you can see, there is a P that's been set. If you look over here, when over to the right, when I'm hovering over the uh, combinator, there's a P set because we don't have 2000 or. Um, it then goes into the train counter, it then comes into the requester. You open up the requester, you get the standard um, circuit connection display GUI that you get on any lamp, and you also get this up here. This will be very important very soon. So what we're going to say is, if the special uh, signal trains on the way that comes with TSM, if trains on the way, which is currently zero, and this comes from the train counter, if trains on the way is less than our virtual signal P, then I want to send a train. And that's indicated by the lamp coming on. Now, we haven't filled this in yet. We need to fill this in. It needs a priority schema. We don't have any yet. So let's set one up. You, use, you do that by opening the TSM GUI and this button here, the up arrow, is for fi defining sourcing priorities. It's because they actually do give you a prioritization capability, but more about that in future tut tutorials. Um, so the resource we want here is iron ore. Let's therefore define the resource ID as the resource type that we're after. And the ID doesn't matter, you can do anything, so you can create as many of these as you like. For this example, let's just use iron ore, iron ore. You then define where these can come from. Station list, iron ore supply. This will only list supply stations. It has to come from a supply station, and it is actually a priority order. In this case, we only have one. If you had two, it would always take it from the top of the list first. More about that later as well, but that basically sets it up. You can go in here and see more detail of the weight condition, but normally that's all you need to get going. So we now have a priority. We can then put this into our priority schema and copy basically these icons. This is the resource and this one is the um, ID. It will take it from here and here comes the train already and that's how we do it. Now um, there is currently a train here so it is uh, satisfied, the condition is satisfied, this is not active. You can see the icon and you can see the ore because this will actually, the train count will give you a read on the trains on the way signal and it will also tell you how many of each type of resource you have. Now what we're finding is we have 1.9k ore, so we're calling another train. Uh, there's none available, so the light's still on. You also get information from here, unsatisfied requests. It says that this stop, Rodin, because we didn't give it a better name, Rodin is calling from this um, iron ore supply and no train is yet available. So you're, uh, you're made aware of any of these sort of issues. If you get a lot of these, you probably need some more trains. Um, Rodin is now satisfied. Uh, if we refresh this, the outstanding request has gone. It will automatically update, but only when there's a new train event to update it. So it's been satisfied, and that basically is your simple setup. That's all there is to it to get going in under five minutes if you take out the waffle. So thanks for your time. I will go through some more advanced features in the upcoming tutorials. Stay tuned. Bye-bye for now.